Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello and welcome to our Coffee Break. Today we have a fun guest on, Irfan Nasrullah who is a long-term resident of Hopkinton, and we're going to learn a lot more about you in our, in our chat. We've gotten a chance to meet you a little bit, but this is fun. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's certainly you're, my, my pleasure. You're, you're a have, busy guy. You didn't have to come far. Like, your office is what? Like, you can throw a rock from here to there? I can, yes. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's so wait. convenient. I can park at my office, walk over here. And, you uh, you grew up here in town. I sure did. Graduate um, of Hopkinton High? No, okay. no. So I moved, my family moved here in 81, uh -huh. uh, December 81. Wow. Uh, middle of Does the Does that constitute year. being a townie, being year 81? How many years ago is that? I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> B. McMull <laughs> B. McMullen, who's been here since 54, gets teased that she's not a townie. Already seven Do the math. 37, 37 years. Yeah. Yeah. 37 year resident of Hopkinton. <laughs> But that's kind of and, a misnomer. And you're only 35, so how could that be? I know, I know. You know, it's funny. I hit a certain age, and, the, and it started going backwards. It got younger. But you also I'm worked here when Hockey and schools weren't what they are today. Exactly. So I moved here from Holliston. Uh, uh, we moved mid-year. And uh, so I finished out that first year in Holliston. But you were a high schooler at that time. I was. I was a freshman mm -hmm. in high school. Okay. The schools were not nowhere near what they are today. Got mm -hmm. it. So... Um, Got it. Uh, so I went to Bancroft in Worcester. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. And um, yeah, so that was my, my high school experience. Wow. But you grew up here. But I grew up here. I kept and coming then you back. Said, and I got to move back. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, well, the, uh, not only did you move back, you moved back to the house that you grew up in. Absolutely. Oh, wow. God. So I mean, it's kind of a convoluted set of circumstances, yeah. but you know, um, mom was there by herself and. Then she moved out into a 55 plus. Uh, my wife and I were living in Grafton, and um, the house was rented. And we got to a point where, if we continued renting the house, it was going to be considered an investment property. Mm -hmm. So I said, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why are we staying here at Grafton? Let's jump on this opportunity." And, um, yeah, so we bought the house and uh, renovated it. Mom moved in with us, and that oh, was always cool. part of the plan. Mm -hmm. cool. Mom said, you know, the only way I'll live with you is if you buy this house. And I said, gladly. <laughs> so yeah. Right across solution. from Lake Whitehall. Yeah, uh, right by Lake Whitehall. Yeah. Um, you're really into nature and environment. It's a great setting. Yeah. Well, we should so say that you're, you're a successful attorney in the um, environmental well, space. Environmental and real estate. And real estate. Wow. So mm -hmm. it's actually the experience of living, uh, living by Whitehall that kind of got me uh, interested in environmentalism, I guess is the best way mm -hmm. to put it. Mm -hmm. um, just being able to hike around and going through the Upton State Park and having Lake Whitehall there and kind of hiking around there. It just got, I mean, I was always into nature. Yeah. But uh, being, being close by gave me a chance to, you know, really, in, well, you know, interact. Um, we're in a, we're really blessed in this town. We have incredible natural resources, mm -hmm. and we're trying to preserve and maintain <laughs> them. And there's always tension and conflict about the right balance. Yeah, but we have a lot of open space, and, and hopefully we'll continue to preserve open space. You know, well, I mean, as a member of a planning board, I think you've seen a lot of the open spaces going. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And, and where you've grown up, the development from oh, some very, exploded. very... McMansion type homes around the lake now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> you know, some of my fondest memories as a kid were hiking out. My buddy would come over, uh, would hike it just in my backyard, go, go deep into the woods. Yep. There was this big rock that we used to you know, <laughs> not camp out. We would hang yeah, out yeah, on. Yeah, the big rock. Light, yeah. a, light a fire, and we'd just kind of hang out in the woods. Mm -hmm. uh, so then when I moved, I you know, went to college and came back, and that rock is now a house. So, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the middle of the woods. Right? Way out in the wow. woods, yeah. So I mean, a beautiful house. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And they've, they've done a good job with it. But, um, yeah, it's one of those things change. where it's, yeah, it's change. It's progression. And, you know, my dad at the time was like, oh, great. All these beautiful houses. Our house value is going to go up. <laughs> well, there's that. That's the sure plus did. line. Yeah. <laughs> it sure right. did, yeah. Right. So you've but, been on planning board yes. now. This past years? year. Uh, one year. One year. One year. So one I year. filled a one-year seat. Okay. And, so what's um, that been like for you? Just it's been fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, it's been such a collegial board. I think mm -hmm. everybody works well together. Everyone has their say. Um, I think 
my hat's off to John Ferrari. He's been a fantastic chairman. Um, he's really let people kind of debate mm -hmm. openly, talk about it. I think it's uh, some people complain that you know we don't want to see all that debate out in the open, mm -hmm. but I thought it was I thought it was great because that way people can see what we're talking about yeah. and, and understand what the what the issues are and where we're coming from and and how the varying opinions all come into a, a decision, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is how it should yeah. work. I mean, as someone who watches a lot of the planning board and selectmen's meetings, one of the things I actually really appreciated this past year watching was that there was a lot more time taken to listen to residents' concerns and things like that. Yeah. And yes, some were very repetitive, some were <laughs> argumentative, <laughs> but literally you guys sat there and like took it in way better than it had been in the past. Yeah. And um, I had a chance to like chat with Muriel last night, and she talked about how like you guys all like took um, John out after the last planning board meeting, yeah. and that it felt like you know this was a this is a board that's working well together and knit, knit it well together, and it's it, and that she goes, you know, for a couple of people who've been on for a long time, it hadn't felt that way. Right. So it's been a you know it's been a year of some bumps and things like that, but I think one thing to hold John Ferrari up is that he actually gave people the chance to rise up and take leadership on a certain project. Yeah. So sometimes it may come off that like it's unorganized, but these people have actually are project leads, you know, right. liaisons and like mm -hmm. the first time leading it and having to interact with the public. It there is some growing pains in that. Absolutely. And and you know, so there's uh as I was kind of reflecting on my time at, at the planning board, a couple of things occurred to me. One is to ha to ask the chairman to run the whole show. And John did a fabulous job. Right. Even mm -hmm. when, when, when no one else could take over. But I mean, the, the, the packet's that thick. I mean, sometimes 800 pages you know, yeah, of, when it, of, of materials to go through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of dividing up the task made a lot mm -hmm. of sense to have each person, you know, to be a project lead. And, and that way you wouldn't have to. Well, that makes more sense. And that actually you is. You still have to go through everything just to be right. prepared and be able to discuss it properly. But well, the fact that the individuals that step up to be on any of these committees are leaders in many ways in their own right and, and have the intellect yeah. and the passion to take pieces of it and share that, you know, uh, responsibility well, in yeah. a different way. Well, and you just cited an example, which is the difference between leadership and management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leadership allows others to take charge and allows others to navigate and sometimes has to redirect, but allows right. that. Management is, you know, yeah. a little you, more oppressive. You do this and you do yeah. That, yeah. So, a uh, little segue. So, you have kids here in town. I do. And one Tell is. Tell us about them, girls. Uh, yeah, boys, ages. Tell us about the kids. <laughs> We're all about the kids in Hopkins. It's a time of year. It's a very busy. Well, you know, of course, when you ask someone to talk about their kids, they. I'm sure my face is glowing. It's like, yeah, well, I love like, my cats. Yeah. 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 I'm very biased. But I have two beautiful the kids. They're the best. I can tell us about the kids. So, uh, my daughter, Natalia, is uh, graduating. <gasps> Congratulations. Hopkins in high school. Cheers. First one. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Congrats. <laughs> She's graduating with your daughter. Yes. She's got yes. a. Yes. Class of 2018. So, the so this first graduating, makers. my last graduating. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she's going to uh, UMaine. So it's bittersweet, awesome. and I'm sure you've experienced it with uh, with your yeah. others. That mm -hmm. oh no, my baby's gone. My baby's I, about to leave. I, th and, you know, I think it's been neat to watch the kids. Um, like there are like five going to UMaine. I think or four. Yeah. So a that lot. like they there there's going to be some synergy and connections when they, wherever they go too. That they'll have some home. Now, right. I mean, there's some that are going places that, like, I'm like, um, Amy Ritterbush's son's going to Wales. I was going to say international. And wow. stuff yeah. like that. Um, yeah. I think awesome. there might be a couple going to Miguel. Which is uh -huh. not typical. Yes. This is, seems to be a new way. We're relatively yeah. new, at least in terms well, of. I mean, actually, yeah. that speaks volumes mm -hmm. to the high school. Yes, right? it does. Yes, it does. Our does. school does. system to be able yes, to go exactly. sending kids to Miguel. That's right. It's amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. fantastic. The U.S. News World Report came out, and we came out as five again, top yeah. five. So that's Pretty cool. That's, that's, very that's cool. pretty yeah. good. Hopkinton. You know, and when the top two are Boston Latin and the um, AMSA school in Marlboro, it's, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah I mean, to say that Boston Latin is a public school is <laughs> such a stretch. <laughs> and the other one, public school. And, and the other one is, a char charter. is a charter school. Right. But, I mean, to be in that thing, I mean, we, we've outranked now Lexington and Dedham and Dover and yeah. All Sudbury's. The um, yeah. Well and it's just from... It's just from proper management. Even when yeah. you look at the per pupil expenditure, we're not we're at the low. top. We're, we're actually, actually quite reasonable. Pretty, yeah. I mean, we're not low, but we're very um, right. 
We That's right in there where we should be. So, so she's um, headed there, and then you have What's another her interest? One. Well, before yeah. we oh, get yeah. up, Natalie, what is she interested in Natalia. at this point? She is Natalia. interested Natalia. in medicine. So tell me your name again. Natalia. There. Natalia. Natalia. Yeah. Okay. So like mm -hmm. your dad. Yeah. So ah. she wants to be a doctor like my, well, not like my, my dad was internist. Okay. Uh, so she's always wanted to be a pediatrician. She okay. She loves kids, has always, always has. Mm -hmm. uh, Babysits for a lot of people, has her own little yeah. business going with that. <laughs> right. That's for uh, her, too. Yeah. Love well, school. fabulous. Oh, yeah. And um, so actually now she's, I mean, she just cares about people. Yeah. And uh, so she's doing a project. You know, the seniors can take kind of the last month off and do the senior project. Um, so she's working at the Beaumont and, oh, wow. and helping with the elderly. Oh, and uh, nice. that's really where she is taking a, you know, a page from my dad. Because mm -hmm. my dad, uh, he, was a, he was a doctor. He was actually a very, very well-known and yeah. very highly respected doctor yeah. in this area. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but of course, I'm talking about my own father. So That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, no, he was, he, was, he was excellent. And mm -hmm. it's funny, you know, you find out a lot more about your parents after they pass. Yes. Um, mm. Very true. That's when you get all these stories. And, very true. Um, so Natalia was telling me that she was in class, and a substitute teacher came in and recognized the last name and said, oh, yeah, your, your grandfather was my doctor for so many years. Oh, that's that's so heartwarming. Good. So, uh, good. yeah, but so my dad, he used to volunteer at um, nursing homes mm -hmm. and just to keep them company, yeah. just to be there and that's provide sweet. company. And, um, you know, his fear was always ending up in a, in a nursing home mm -hmm. and no one coming to visit yeah. and mm -hmm. being all alone and, uh, fortunately, we were able to prevent that. For, that your, never for your mother and for yeah. him. Yeah. And for my mom, right. too. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so my daughter's kind of taking that page, Good. and she's working at the Beaumont. And she's, the project's coming to an end, and she's still saying, well, I, I want to go I'll back. Stay, All yeah. these people, they know, so they're, nice. they're no, sad they that I'm know. leaving. And oh. so. so tell us about your son. So my son is, uh, he's going to St. John's. Oh, okay. Good. And mm -hmm. um, he's, he's doing really well. He had a, he was in, um, you know, he did the first semester in Hopkinton mm -hmm. and uh, I guess it wasn't really a good fit for him. Mm -hmm. um, he he kind of needed that change of pace. Mm -hmm. I, we I, know my about little, boys. My little son, <laughs> yeah. I like to affectionately say, very bright young man. Yeah. But he exhausted nothing academically. Yeah. Life was just coasting and I swore um, I was going to have to change the locks on my doors when he <laughs> turned 18 to shove them out into the world. Yeah. And so he went to private school and it taught him how to study. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really made him work. He was under the microscope and it gave him the tools that he needed. Yeah. So, you know, it's hard. That's it's hard. You know, and I, I feel fortunate that we could make some of those choices. Um, but he needed a very it's different environment. Than, uh, yeah, lots of great options situations. for schools in the area. Yeah. So your son's doing well at St. John's. He's, he's doing And he's a junior, did you say? Uh, oh, freshman. 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 Sorry. Oh, yeah. So, okay. you know, when he was here, his grades were kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was talking to, you know, actually one of my dad's friends, and he was saying, maybe you should send him to private school. I don't think he's mm -hmm. being challenged. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we moved to Hopkinton for the schools. Yeah. Now I'm going to go pay for it? Yeah. Right. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. but it's whatever's the right fit. Whatever's the right fit for right your fit. child. It yes, really indeed. was. And he's killing it now. He's oh, doing great. fantastic. And, uh, they don't let you get away with anything. And not that our schools right. let you get away with anything. But we, there's just a different needs being addressed. Yeah. Um, and so. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I guess it feels 24 7 at a. Uh, well, no, it's not a boarding school. It's, it's not a, a boarding it's, school. Yeah. But. Um, but they make but he's you doing better. well, and that's there's, awesome. There's an ethic there, mm -hmm. and it just forces you all to work together mm -hmm. and try hard. And, and grades and college is what everyone is focused on. Right. And it's actually, I think being all boys really helps. Yes. Because yes. there is... I mean, obviously, there's, you know, as a young boy. The of us evil women. <laughs> well, it's, it's, there's, <laughs> some, there's some data out there. I also it's went to an all-girls school. Right. And, oh, there's and, some and benefits. I actually built very strong friendships that I didn't have when I was going yeah. to a, a, and a public school. The, and in your own lane they're with still the, with the my closest friends, some of my closest friends to this day. And it was because it was like a very tight-knit, kind of almost sorority yeah. feel to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's that. And then also... Amongst guys, there yes. is a uh, pressure when there are women around to put each other down yeah. to look better in front of the girls. Oh, the, the yeah, you know. I so mean, there's always that <laughs> male 
I'm, yeah, I'm I gotta be you. tougher. Be, yeah. yeah, look at me, look at me. Right. See that, girls? See how Peacock well I, you know, I, I put all these other guys down? And, <laughs> right. And that's, you know, so that was yeah. part of it. But mm -hmm. now that he's there, everyone just kind of works together. That's, and, that's um, awesome. That's worked out great. That's cool. And there's a bunch of Hopkinton kids there, too. Right. A lot of them go there for sports. I mean, it's been yeah. big in hockey. Really big in And kids that want to pursue hockey more. Hoppington doesn't have a hockey team, and right. St. John's does. Your beautiful wife has a career as well. Yes, yeah, so she's a real estate. She's a realtor. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Real estate salesperson. She's doing really well. She's you know, no matter what it is she does, she does well. Yes, I and yeah. She has an eye for design, though. When she yeah. redesigned that, <laughs> your, house, uh, your house is amazing. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> she. Um, she exemplifies something that I'm really trying to push on my kids, is that whatever you do, do it well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, don't do anything half-hearted. Um, go all in. So at least you can be proud of saying, I tried my best. And then I point to my wife and say, look, you know, she came from Pakistan. Mm -hmm. She came here, and now she's a successful realtor. You know, mm -hmm. she designed her kitchen. You all yeah. saw how nice it came out. It's, it's, it's like stunning. whatever she does, mm -hmm. it works. She tries her hardest. She was uh, president of the Pakistan Association of Greater Boston. We call it PAGB. Wow. And mm -hmm. um, helped organize things and kind of brought it from my dad's uh, age group mm -hmm. and kind of brought all the younger kids in mm -hmm. and got everyone excited about it and um, started bringing, bringing communities together. And, and Great. It's, yeah, so awesome. everything she does. Well, and, and, and I love hearing again, that biased. you ask <laughs> of your family, you know, whatever you do, do it to yeah. the best of your ability. Absolutely. And and I think that's just, you know, I, I, I was repeating a story to one of my friend's children about, mm -hmm. you know, all they ask is, mm -hmm. you give it do your, your best. best. Give it your and best. You know, you don't have okay. to win. <laughs> right. You just have to put your best effort for Absolutely. Cool. So back to your career. So you're doing environmental and real estate law. Yes. How's With an office right on Main Street. Folks have probably it's seen actually the next door. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, next it is right, right, right next door. Right next door. Yeah. So, um, so, I moved, so I went to California for law school. Oh, and where'd you uh, go? Golden Gate University. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know exactly where this I took accounting classes there. Oh, excellent. I lived in Northern California for 22 years. Oh, and, wow. Uh, when I started Beautiful. working at Touche Ross, they gave a few of us, like, hey, because I wasn't an accounting mm -hmm. major. So California girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you went out there for law school. So I went mm -hmm. out there for law school. Um, my dad got sick, so I came back to look after him. Um, honestly, thought I would never come back when I was there. Loved sure. it. You know, it's beautiful. In my mid-20s, living in San Francisco. It was fabulous. Yeah. Why would I come back? And my dad got sick, and that was good enough reason. Mm -hmm. So came back um, to look after dad, and remembered how much I love the woods, yeah. how much I love New England, and how much all of this stuff kind of rang home. And looking for a job, um, all I could find was divorce, working as a divorce lawyer. Oh. Uh, so I quit that after my first case. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? yeah. Parents were fighting over the kids' uh, toys. <laughs> yeah, that's not for me. It's like, okay. So, <laughs> wrong here. Right, right. <laughs> no. right. <laughs> So I uh, took a step back, said, what, does, what matters to me? What do I care about? I said, the environment. So I went, to, uh, I went back to school, went to Vermont Law School, mm -hmm. got my master's in environmental law. Ah. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, I, you know, I came back. Um, I took a job at the Environmental Crime Strike Force with the, uh, with oh, the cool. Attorney General. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then from there to DEP. Wow. Mm -hmm. And at DEP, I was kind of, I was a lead enforcement attorney for wetlands, waterways, asbestos, hazardous waste, what? all that stuff. Wow. That's um, actually, my son has, did his last internship with the DEP, and it's oh, excellent. Uh, uh, drinking water. water. Yeah, yeah. The water programs, yeah. yeah. So um, wow. oh, when I was there, I realized there's just a lot of people who just have poor representation are getting very poor results. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, you know, there's a place for me out in the, out in the private sector. Mm -hmm. So I left Good DEP, did put up your flip, shingle, put up my shingle, yeah. and then next thing I know, my wife is sending me real estate clients. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll do that too. That's a good yeah, balance. That's, that's a sure. great You can sell it. I'll, I'll do the closing. Right. Yeah. Closing. Well, it also helps with the real estate uh, with the environmental piece too, yeah. because mm -hmm. a lot of environmental issues are driven by real estate development. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So as we were just talking about preserving open space and, mm -hmm. and wetlands and vernal pools and all the rest of it. Yep. So I find that it goes hand in hand that uh, if anyone is 
approaching me with uh, with the development, I know how to. I can speak the language of the right. environmental engineers, and, and right. we can kind of come to a yeah, nice. And not all and development is bad. It's yeah. just how do you place the development? How do you preserve and you know? I, I mean, I'm reading articles about how they kind of blew it in the seaport. Mm -hmm. and didn't create some of the open spaces. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean... I, I think with the election coming up, um, we, oh. we've said that you're on, you're on planning board. You're actually running for selectmen. Yes. And, which is cool, election's Monday, so vote. This show's oh, yeah. airing yes. you know, tonight, Everybody so vote. vote. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we wish you the best on that. But I, I think when you're talking about the environment and things like that, it isn't something that you've left in your past. No. And it's... Um, I don't know if people realize how much you enjoy still to this day passive recreation in this community and beyond. Every one, he drives a Prius, yeah. <laughs> okay. but two, he drives a Prius with a bike rack on it because he takes his bike almost everywhere he goes. Really, I do. you're I a do. cyclist too. I love riding my bike. Um, so I have both a mountain bike and a road bike. Uh -huh. um, I was just going to ask you what kind of bikes. Where my do heart you ride? Mountain biking. Okay. Um, okay. You've done all. You've told me you've done up in state forest. You do the trails around. Here. Oh yeah. Um, the whole uh, everywhere around here. So, gosh, about ten years ago, when the kids were really young, I went by myself, and I just got in the new pedals. So my my feet were clipped in. I wasn't used to getting out. I was no. just going to get a sip of water, and uh, there's a log here. I'm going to put my foot down on that and stop. Oh. Well, I couldn't get out of the pedals and See, I can do cracked that. a rib. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So since then, I said, okay, I can't ride alone. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm not invincible anymore. I'm getting <laughs> old. So, um, so I don't ride alone anymore. So it's usually the, the mountain biking piece is uh, on the weekends. But uh, the road bike works out great because yeah. then I can just kind of cruise around. And yeah. that I can do alone. Yeah. Well, your background, I love the fact, I mean, with your expertise around environmentalism, your personal passion around it, and your love of this town, and your yeah. history here. Well, you've been here since you were 16 years old. I mean, yeah. what a wonderful, it's just been such a pleasure getting oh, to know okay. you yes. um, and, as a member of the planning board. And, you know, this isn't a political show, but we're, you know, always love to have new people on, on that we, you know, yeah. can get, get to, to know. know. Yes, yeah, indeed. You know, I think getting to know is, um, gosh, kind of, one of, my, one of my passions about the whole running for a, for a planning board and then running for selectmen. It's just getting to know people, right. yes. getting out there, making making a whole new set of friends exactly. that, uh, that that share the same passions mm -hmm. about yeah. our town. Yeah. And uh, that's been interesting. And on the and debate night, I was watching it on TV. You ended it like that. It was, you know, you know whatever happens, I've, ma I've met new people, I've yes. made new friends, yeah. and I, you very sincerely mean that, that you Absolutely. care about the community. Yeah. That's right. I care about the community, and, and you know, even even the people I'm running against, they, they have the same interests as I do, you know? And it's, they care about volunteers. the community. They care about and the community. And, and, and Patricia hit right on, excited, <laughs> is that, you know, as much as, like, there might be rallying for one candidate or another, things like that, people need to realize these are volunteers. They're giving up yep. oodles and oodles oh, of their time and energy. Right. I mean, on yeah. the planning board, I don't think people <clears> even realize which is probably the most demanding board, even more than selectmen right. in the town, how much time it takes. Not just in the meeting, all but the prep. preparation. It's the site, prep part. Yeah. That's the, the prep, <gasps> the Saturdays that you guys do these site walks, you're out there for yeah. hours mm -hmm. with developers. Well, like I said, you know, we have this big, thick packet that we need <laughs> to get through. <laughs> right. And, I mean, and I you're like, why do we need this no version? And you're an attorney. You used to read the reams of stuff. You know, so it's just like... So but 800 that. pages is a lot. That is a lot for anybody. Yeah, okay, so truth be told, I mean, the, <laughs> a lot of the 800 is like reports and engineering things that... You can, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you... You, you, you can zero yeah, in on what you need to. You can to. zero in on what you need to learn. Right, yeah, um, yeah. But it's still a lot, and there's, you know... Well, we as, Michael. as an attorney, you know, I, when I look at any kind of case, I have to take some time to myself to just reflect on it and think... Yes. What is my position? Where do I come on? This? How exactly. do I think about this? Mm -hmm. This um, this project, this proposal, whatever it may be. Well, and when you look at some of these candidates that are running and things like that, with you, with your like personal expertise and what it brings to like a board of select, I mean, you think of someone like Meg Tyler, who's a professor of ethics, and what she can bring to will be bringing to the school committee. Or right. Michael King, Michael King is a King scientist, not too and long ago. what he brings is that these people are actually taking what they do personally in their lives, day in and day out, 
and then turning into volunteer. Right. And, and it's right. to their community. I mean, you um, can't ask for more. I mean, that's yeah. an incredible. I, th I mean, I think, and I think the diversity of opinion, and yes. thought, and diff different people coming in from different backgrounds. Studies yeah. have been mm -hmm. shown that better policies are developed when you have diversity mm -hmm. of opinion mm -hmm. and you talk through it and can come to compromises versus right. everybody on Absolutely. the Absolutely. And diversity so, of yeah. opinion so often maybe. comes from people who have had different life experiences, exactly. different right. Um, right. you know experiences in different places, um, <laughs> who have different perspectives because of that. And, and, and yeah. we love it. Mm -hmm. like just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah, I mean, I was just thinking about the planning board candidates yeah. that are mm -hmm. like running yeah. now. It's like, you know, you have one that has, you know, both have Zach, and one is also, Deb is an architect with historic mm -hmm. preservation experience. That they're, they're really taking things that have a very niche that brings to that next level right. on the board, mm -hmm. just like you are with the selectmen. Darlene's trying to, to remind us all to vote on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it's yeah, very yeah. important, and yes. that, mm -hmm. you know, as we look, if you don't vote, Shame on, shame on you. Shame on you. There's, 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 you know, I no understand. We, we just went through like three nights of town meeting. It's, that's hard to get to. It's hard to commit yes. to. And, but you know, I go, the but, booth is but, but voting, yeah. you know, no one has an excuse. Whether you get an absentee ballot or anything, vote. Yeah. You know, so there's yeah. tons yeah. of outlets to get to know mm -hmm. the candidates. It's on um, okay. HCAM. It's on the Independent, you know, um, different websites. Um, but um, we yeah. wish you luck. Yeah. I Thank think a lot of the, what's going on is just mostly spring things, and um, well, I don't know. Oh, no, the the um, what? yard sales are happening this weekend. The yeah, yard sales. No, it's not. It was rescheduled. Did they reschedule right. we the weather? Well, well, we're I, actually going to talk about that it's on the next show. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest thing happening is the royal wedding. <laughs> Tomorrow morning at dawn, I will be up. I have to object uh, to that. No. The no. biggest thing happening is an election on Monday. All right. All right. Cheers. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get an $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.